Hey guys, and welcome back to a, another video. Today, we're gonna be talking and looking at something a little bit different, and that is how your EQs could be lying to you. Now, that is a very probably clickbaity title, and it, it isn't just come out of nowhere. I was experimenting with a new plugin I had called EQ Curve Analyzer. Now I wanted to have a look at some EQ curves of some of my plugins and I was just interested. I was also gonna do a comparison which will be out at some point between Analog Obsession and Slate plugins. And I thought maybe I could just match some of the EQs using this or at least have a look how the curves differ uh, just to help me kind of get them closer together for doing that video. But one thing I noticed when I was comparing two different EQs, which was my Slate Digital and my Analog Obsession SSL style EQs, is they didn't really match up in the way I thought. So I started messing around with all my SSL style EQs and came out with some kind of interesting results. So I thought I'd share what I've found and why you should always mix with your ears and not your eyes because your eyes are going to deceive you when certain plugins tell you frequencies and boost amounts that don't seem to line up with what an actual analyzer shows. So let's just dive straight in and you'll kind of understand where I'm going as we'll get into it. It is a bit of a kind of nerdy EQ kind of deep dive, but I thought this was really interesting, especially if you watch like a tutorial, for example, like I watch a lot of tutorials from CLA and he goes, well, SSL style EQ, 10 dB boost at 10K. Well, we're gonna find out that that is not necessarily what you're gonna get from different plugins. So the way we wanna look at it, I'm gonna actually use the CLA, CLA Mix Hub because I like CLA mixes and this is meant to be his SSL console, which has been on heaps of mixes. And a lot of people that want that SSL sound are looking at someone like CLA and going, I wanna sound like them. And it's, you know, it's a Waves plugin that a lot of people might have. So let's just start off with having a look at the frequencies and seeing what's going on. So I'm gonna do, let's say a nine dB boost at the stock setting for this high mid band. So that's 1.5 and three, um, that's three kilohertz and 1.5 on the Q. Now Q factors are gonna be all over the place. Um, they're gonna be the most kind of random thing. So look at that, we've got it on this bottom EQ curve. Right, so this is group four, um, and we've got group one, two, and three. You can see this curve here. Now, the center, center frequency here is about four-ish, and we've got a 6.8 dB boost. Now, we set it on three, and the nine dB boost, so it's not exactly what it says it is but maybe that's just the SSL style EQ. Now this isn't about what's most like an SSL or not. It's not about that, it's about comparing similar EQs based off similar hardware, which you'd think would be the most similar, right? That's the whole point. It's not like I don't have an SSL console here, we're gonna compare. I'm not gonna compare 20 SSL. There's plenty of videos to do that. This isn't the video for that. So let's have a look first at the Slate. I use Slate mostly. So let's do the same thing. We're gonna do a nine dB boost. Now you'll see slate as this underlay. Now straight away you'll notice, despite the fact we're at three, we've got 1.5 on the Q. So the exact same settings as CLA mixed hub is a completely different frequency. Now this is kind of closer, but it's kind of on the other side. So like split the difference and it's at three decibels, but it's not exactly anywhere near. So three is here, right? That's three there. So neither of them are boosting at three at all, despite saying three. So that's a good start. Um, this is much closer to nine at the peak. It's just underneath where this is significantly less, which I find really, really interesting. Um, now let's just try and match it, for example. So what I could do is maybe change the cue a little bit and we go up. Um, 
So if we go to about, uh, let's go about 5.5. Okay. So I could match it. The curves are similar, but let's have a look at our settings now. So this is set to nine decibel boost, three kilohertz, 1.5Q. On the slate, it's seven dB boost, 5.5 kilohertz, and a 1.57 on the Q. So if you go tell someone, grab an SSL style EQ that these both are, and do that boost, well, neither of these results are actually doing that boost. And they're doing it at completely different settings. So let's have a look at maybe what we do instead is try and get what we said we wanted. So 3 dB, uh, 9 dB boost at 3K. So let's boost this up to about 9 dB according to this and move it down until we get to about 3K. So 3K is just here. So we're almost there. So that's pretty close. So let's try that on the slate. Okay. Okay, that's matching pretty good now. But what have we got? We've got this saying it's a 10 dB boost. This saying it's an 8.53 dB boost. Are we at nine? And we're at eight. So we just need to give it both a little bit more boost, right? Want to get to nine? And of course, it's kind of arbitrary whether whether you want the top of the peak to be nine or not. Uh, that's not really the point, but we're just using that as a reference point so we can get them similar. Okay, so what are we looking now? Well, the slate, it is 9.58. This is at, I think, 10.9. The frequency for the mix hub is 2.66 and the frequency for the slate is 4.64, which is close to double. So like nowhere in the similar range. If you're reaching for those knobs on an actual console and you have two channels next to each other and you're trying to do the same boost, but one is the slate and one is the CLA mix hub, you're going to be way off. And maybe it's just these two plugins. Okay. So let's go add a different plugin. So we're going to keep the mix hub as a reference. Now the reason I want to keep the mix hub as the reference is this is meant to be an actual SSL console from CLA, right? So it's meant to be the SSL console everyone wants. So like I said, we're going to use that as a reference and just see what these other SSL consoles do. Okay, so now let's compare the Satsun series Stone EQ 4K. Now I've got to do a review of this. Um, it's Sonomus's 4K style EQ. Now this is meant to take both the E and the G series and sort of blend them together and it's going to have its own kind of thing going on. So don't expect it to be the same as either of these plugins either because it's kind of their own take. It isn't meant to be accurate, but it's just interesting to see if the frequencies line up at all. Okay, so let's just actually just input what we kind of want. So it's three kilohertz, 50% um, we'll pretend is that 1.5 and we'll go on dB and see what that gets. Okay, the right frequency. So that's interesting. The Satsum, which is less meant to be an accurate S uh, L style EQ, is actually way more accurate to what it says it's gonna be, right? It's just the Q factor is a little bit off, but this has a different kind of Q factor. So let's just bring that Q factor in. We've got the Q factor in, we can bring it back, match it there. And it's slightly different. You've got this kind of low end bump going. This might be because of the drive. There is built in drive. So we turn the drive all the way off. Seems to get rid of that and yeah. We're pretty accurate. Let's compare. Uh, I'm just going to open that up itself. So here's that curve um, on that instead of using the underlay. And let's have a look at it compared to the slate. So quite similar to the slate. Slate, slate's got this slight asymmetric kind of thing going on. The Satsun, if you want an accurate of like, I want to put 3K up 3K, 
that seems to be the one to go for. Like I said, this isn't a comparison. It's just to kind of look at how different the controls and what the EQ is doing is. So let's go to our last one. Um, we're going to go to underlay three. And that is this SSQ free SSL style plugin. And let's do the same thing. So three, let's go to the Q there maybe and we'll boost up. And isn't that interesting? That also is correctly at that frequency. So it does seem that these kind of less endorsed by SSL or maybe companies that don't literally have an SSL in front of them are modeling the perfect frequency, like what it says is what it is. Whereas the Slate and the Mix Hub, which both supposedly are from actual SSL consoles, CLA's console in the terms of the Mix Hub, and I believe Slate has access to plenty of analog gear, so some G-series of some form would have been used, and their frequencies are way off, but maybe the hardware they're based on, maybe on the hardware Slate has 4.5K is what 3K is because of drift of components, and maybe it's like it is there. Um, but I just found it very, very interesting there, so I wanted to take it a step further, and I've kind of pre-prepared this, and what happens if we do an entire EQ curve? So not just, let's boost one frequency, see what that's doing. Let's EQ something. So I've EQ'd some drums, I've gone kind of over the top, I've done a shelf at the top, a shelf at the bottom, and a low mid cut, which I often do on drums. So I'm gonna open up all the versions of that and we're actually going to compare them all and see how close I could get. Now I couldn't match the curves on all of them um, which was interesting so they all slightly had different curves um, they have all have a slight different sound to their frequencies and we are going to compare them like I said it's not about what's best but what kind of you know I guess the more accurate and we'll come back in a second when I've opened them all up. Okay, so you can see here what curve we've kind of gone for. Now, I originally built this curve in the SSL, I mean, in the Slate plugin, and then kind of recreated it and adjusted it in the uh, Mix Hub plugin instead. And what I found was quite interesting was that the Slate had a slight asymmetric curve to it. Um, that I couldn't really replicate. So instead I like redid it on the mix hub and then base the other EQs on that and then try to get the slate to match. So everything kind of matched better rather than trying to match the slate, which was slightly different to the rest of them. Um, but let's just have a look. So let's start off with this is the mix hub. Let's compare it to the slate. So this is that asymmetric bit here. You can see here, there's a little bit more of a rise in this cut there there's a little bit more of a rise in the high end, as close as I can match it. Now I could bring that down and we ended up losing it here. So it's really, you know, it depends on whether you can kind of hear this or not. When it comes to hearing it, 10K and to 20K were less sensitive. So a slight difference there isn't gonna be as dramatic as a slight difference down here in the regions that you can hear really well generally, which is the three to six K kind of with kind of very um, acute hearing there. But the low end was the biggest one. If you look at that mid curve, you can see, yeah, it comes off here, this low boost here. It's like if I turn it up, it boosts all this kind of mid range, lower mid range a lot more. And if I bring that so that's flat, you're losing a lot of low end. So that low end shelf was very different with the slate compared to um, the mix hub and compared to the rest of the plugins. If we keep going through, if we have a look at the Stone EQ or Stone EQ, I could get that pretty close. Maybe I could adjust it a little bit. Again, there's a slight difference in this kind of band, let's just, uh, we can get a little bit closer maybe. Uh, slight difference, but a lot closer there. 
and then if we go to the SSQ, this was slightly different again. Now, I'm not sure which SSL the SSQ is based on, uh, but you can see here, you've got this little bit more roll off there, but we can match most of it. So now we've got them all matched. Let's have a look at the controls and you're going to be very, well, maybe you're not going to be surprised at this point because we've already proven the frequencies are way off, but let's have a look how different they are. So on the mix hub, we have 8.4 at a 6.32 in the high end. So let's compare that to the slate high end. We've got eight at 10.4. So remember I said CLA puts 10K or 8K on a snare and boosts it all the way up? Well, 10K here equals 6K here. So you're going to get a completely different response if you just take those numbers and go, oh, this is what CLA said to do. This works. So if this is actually true to his console, you're going to need completely different settings in the slate, in the high end, for example. Now let's have a look at this instead, the Ston EQ. We've got 8 dB at 4.39. So compare that to the slate. Let's just think about that. This is 4.39 shelf, and this is a 10.4K shelf when I'm coming to using this EQ curve. Now on their own, maybe they're different, but it's all about using EQ in context. And when you're doing lots of different cuts and boosts, all these minor changes are gonna mean that's gonna be different. This is again, why you gotta use your ears, because if you're up, if you're going all the way down here, let's just say 10.4, remember that. If we go all the way down to 4.39, right, let's have a look at that slate one as the underlay. That's the curve we're getting which is a huge boost in this area compared to where we were before. Um, so that's quite important to kind of think about, you know, and that's why I like using the, the boost and kind of sweep technique um, because they're gonna respond differently. And lastly, let's just take a look at SSQ, I think here, where we're looking at it again, uh, what were we up, 10 point something. We're up really high, right? Um, and I can't release, really, there's no fine details on what that is, but it's a fair decent boost, but we're even higher than the slate. So if you compare these two, for example, in that high end, you're way off on selecting the right frequencies. Now let's look at the parametric dip. We've got minus three here, uh, and we're sitting at about 1.9 on the Q factor, and we're at almost one kilohertz. Here, we're a lot lower at 800, and we've got a slightly tighter Q setting, even that's the same Q, obviously. Here, we have around here, which is 0.78, and here, we have about the same. So these seemed both very similar here. So that's really interesting, right? In the high-end boost, completely different settings. But in the parametrics, these two are the most similar, as we saw before, but we're messing with the parametrics. They seem most accurate to what we're actually doing. And if you have a look here, is about that 7.5 around there that we're actually cutting. So this kind of 7.8 around there makes sense. And now the low shelves, again, they were very different. So 6 dB, 50 Hertz which is just normally what I do on a kick or something that works. Here, we're down lower at 40 Hertz and we're doing eight dB. Here, we're way lower. Oh no, we're about 40 as well. Here, we're at 78. So much higher to get similar curve here. If we went down to about the 40, we could boost up. Um, but to get this kind of 80 to a, well, I guess this 100 plus range, similar, you have an extra 4 dB boost roughly down in the actual low end. So that was quite interesting. And of course, if you match them here at the same boost in the low end, you've got way less of this 50 to 100 K. Uh, 50 to 100 hertz, which is kind of that upper low end. Um, so completely different frequencies for those boosts. 
So what does this really mean? Well, it doesn't mean a lot if you're using your ears um, in the sense that you can get pretty close. And we're going to look at that next. How close can you actually get sonically? And that's using all these boosts. So if we go back, uh, where were we? We, we? we match that curve again. So we've matched all the curves. So what we've shown for matching the curves is we've gotten pretty close. You'd have to use different settings, but if you're using your ears and this is the EQ curve that pleases you, you're getting pretty close. Now, what the most interesting thing is, right, is this infinity EQ. So I made this curve. Now I've got all these curve controls, right? I made this curve. Let's have a look at infinity EQ. Which is five. It lets me go to five. Almost perfect match. Now, this took way longer than it would on an SSL EQ in order to get those curves because I was trying to match them, obviously. Um, they're quite weird curves with some interesting kind of settings. I've also done a low pass and a slight, uh, slight low pass and a slight um, high pass in order to get them even closer. So again, in a digital EQ, you're not gonna get the saturation. There's definitely saturation emulation in all of these SSL style EQs. You're not gonna get in a digital EQ. With something like this or some other complex D digital EQ that lets you adjust the curves greatly, you could probably reach similar curves to this. Um, it might not be as natural, but you could do it. And if you look here, we're much closer, I guess, in the actual frequency bands on what we're kind of boosting and cutting. So how do they all sound? How different are they? Well, let's just do a little bit of a phase test. So this is the Mix Hub drums, right? So the slate at a phase, how different is it? Only a slight difference in the mid range, really? And that sluts a low point, you might not hear that in a mix. Stone EQ was closer, obviously. We kind of figured we could get that closer. And the closest was the SSQ. And this was really interesting to me because this is the free plugin. The free plugin got me the closest to the mix hub, except the actual frequencies on it were the frequencies I wanted. So if I wanted 100, it did 100. It was accurate to what I expect to do when I boost those certain frequencies, which is quite interesting. And then with Infinity EQ, we got even closer. But that was kind of cheating because digital EQ, I could match the curves. I have way more controls than SSL style EQ. So again, does this really matter? Not if you're using your ears, not if you kind of get used to that one EQ plugin you use, you understand where the frequencies sit on the dial and where they correspond at least subconsciously. You don't have to know, you know, 2.6 means it's four. You don't have to know that off the top of your head. You just have to subconsciously feel going into those frequencies. You're gonna boost up and you're like, oh, this is where I want that air. I need to go all the way to 16 or I need to go to 10 to get the 16 or whatever. I need to cut some lower mids. I need to go lower or higher than I expect the number to be. And you find that spot and you just use your ears. That's fine. It gets more difficult when you're new to a plugin and you expect it or you've heard a tip or you're trying to follow some kind of recommendation. Someone's mixing on something. What is interesting to think about is when you're watching these tutorials from all these big name producers and mix engineers and mixing on hardware, that that hardware's frequencies could be way off what you think as someone who's used to a digital environment those frequencies represent. So they say 7 dB boost they like to do on guitars. Well, maybe they don't like to do a 7 dB boost, a 7 kilohertz boost on guitars. What they like to do is what says 7 on their SSL console, which may actually be a 4 kilohertz boost on guitars. So it's interesting to take note of that. Not saying that they understand that or know or, you know, no one's lying or no one's trying to deceive you. It's just certain things work differently despite what they say. So I hope you've enjoyed this kind of very technical and a little bit of a, an interesting kind of video. 
As always, it's just about making music, so just enjoy the plugins you have, get to learn them. Go download the EQ Curve Analyzer. It is a free plugin. Well, it's a pay what you want, so if you just want to try it out, you can pay zero dollars. If you're using it a lot, you can pay a little bit more, obviously. Um, it seems very useful if you want to get into the technical nerdy shit. If you don't, if you don't care, <laughs> Well, thanks for watching this entire video, especially if you don't care. Um, but yeah, you can just go on and mix however you like. So thanks for watching. Look out for more of these kind of technical videos. Let me know down below if this kind of stuff interests you. I don't know if I'm the best at explaining. I think I'll get better as I do more of these videos because I'm used to doing more of the review, which is more of reactionary rather than kind of the technical side of it. But if you enjoy these videos, and even if you enjoy my other videos and you thought this one was a bit boring, give it a like, give it a subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I will see you next time. Uh.